Um, I mean, I don't know what to say about it. It's kind of, it's not surprising in terms of how the game unfolded and what we want the narrative to be. Um, for us, if we really wanted to exhaust our energy on that, we could clip together 10 to 15 plays where it didn't go our way. Um, me taking three, somebody coming underneath me two hands on drives, like all that type of stuff. But you understand in the playoffs, the way the game is called, um, it's a little bit more physical. And whether you're trying to, you know, get fouls on, on, on every possession or not, like it's gonna be 50-50 calls and just how it is. But uh, it sucks that that is the narrative coming out of it because we literally could exhaust our energy on that as well. So. I hope for game two it's about the game and how we play and making shots and the energy and the intensity that we need to play with and knowing what's at stake and that we uh, that that becomes a conversation for sure. Scott, from you your make a, you feel like there's any adjustment you need to make as far as just hearing sure. all that noise? I'm probably not the right one to be talking about fouls. <laughs> 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 I got five of them yesterday, so I got my fair share. So I'm, <laughs> two minute, the two-minute report said you had seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw those two plays. So, um, again, if you really, like, it's the same conversation with every NBA game that happens regular season or not. You can literally go possession by possession and say what was supposed to be a foul, what was not. And both teams and most nights are going to have, re you know, grievances on, uh, on, on how things are called. But at the end of the day, um, basketball decides the game. Seth, what's your specific perspective on how you guys close out on Harden with the three? In terms of like, in terms of where guys land and where the line is of the space. Uh, I we watch a couple of them. But I think it's just in terms of the majority of the time, it's you know we're trying to close out, and maintain our space, and sometimes you know he closes you know that that space, and it's just a. It's a read from the ref, and for us, like we understand tendencies and and things like that, and no one put ourselves in that position. Um, but the biggest one that happened in the fourth quarter, or fourth quarter, of Draymond uh, that wasn't called was it was accurate in terms of James closing the space on Draymond. And, um, you know, if, if there's nowhere for the defender to actually you know, contest and stay in his own lane. The shooter can close that space, then, then that's going to be tough, no matter who it is. Um, but I think over the course of the game, there might have been, you know, there's a lot of 50 50 situations, and, and uh, we're going to do a great job of not putting ourselves in that position. Steph, do you think this is strategic on their part to influence the officiating tomorrow night? I think the me? reason that you asked that question is pretty <laughs> self explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> Steph, is it tricky because, you know, James? Can go forward three feet on some of those sh shots almost it, it, it looks like yeah that's just the way like obviously that's something he's been doing and whether that's how he thinks he normally shoots or that's you know just the way his body goes like whatever it is we as defenders have to be able to contest um not take up his space that, that uh when he takes off and and live with the results so Again, we watch them pretty much all of them, and know how we're going to you know, make or adjust going into the game. Steph, do you get a fair chance? Say what? Do you get a fair chance? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> how do you guys kind of adjust I mean, with the turnovers again being an issue? You know, you want to get out and push the pace, but but also take care of the ball. How, how do you? Get that to we talked about that for a long time. And this five-year run, like we, the way we play and how loose we are and fast-paced and how we move the ball, turnovers are going to happen. Um, we always talk about it's the type of turnovers that you have to avoid, especially in a playoff game where possessions are valuable. Um, in that first half, uh, we had some where we were trying to thread the needle with the pass or the, the read was just the wrong read or we were rushing um, and not letting the floor get space before we drove and, and knew where the lanes were. So 
those ones will we need to, to correct. There's going to be turnovers, um, just again the way that we play. But uh, keeping them you know, around that ten number and just getting shots up at the end of the day for us is it works to our advantage. And, uh, the fact that we <coughs> played the way we did with twenty turnovers speaks a lot about how much better we can play um, and hopefully take control of the series. Steve really liked the energy and effort on on both ends. Was that discussed today too, as you guys? You know, watch, watch film and just... It was a carryover from, from, from game six of last series, for sure, in terms of sense of urgency and especially on the defensive end, communicating. They're an extremely talented team and have guys that can create all over the floor. So you can't get defeated by them making tough shots because they're going to take a bunch of tough shots. They shot 74 shots and 47 of them were three. So, like, it's going to happen. They're going to make shots, but we got to be able to push back in transition continue to just stay solid. Um, we'll do better, you know, myself included, or hopefully especially with you know, dumb fouls in terms of reaching and things like that. But uh, intensity and energy was great and allowed us to pretty much have control of the, of the game the entire way. Uh, I want to try to repeat that. Steph, on that note, what's your perspective on the whole like math of figuring out the whole three-point equation and what's better to take? Uh, I mean, they designed a team to shoot threes, and, and you know that's something that I, I guess I don't know the I don't know the math or how like every possession if you take you know a certain amount of threes versus twos it works out in your favor no matter what percentage you shoot. For us, it's just we want to create good shots. Um, we know we have a lot of great three-point shooters and, and can do it off the dribble or off off the off the ball, but. Um, we want to shoot a high percentage, and that's something we kind of hang our hat on is the type of shots that we create. And I guess for them, they they shoot, what, 45 threes a game or something like that, and shooting the 30 percentile or something. So it's going to be a lot of long rebounds and things like that that we have to uh, to focus on. Um, but if they make shots, you can't get defeated, deflated. you got to just push back and transition, make them defend. And, over the course of the game, hopefully it works out in your favor. How tough a job do you think the referees have, particularly in this series, with obviously the, the rule interpretations, the in-between games lobbying, and the complaining on the court, that type of stuff? It's a lot of action. Um, and I think they've uh, done a, a solid job throughout the whole playoffs uh, in terms of just trying to make the right you know, call on every possession. And, Whatever. There's going to be complaining. There's going to be questions and conversations on the court. There's going to be reactions and people throwing their hands up because everybody thinks they never foul. All that type of stuff. <laughs> that's just that's been part of the game forever. Um, in the heat of the moment, as a player, sometimes you don't realize like what actually happened until you see the replay or you go back and see the film the next day. That type of vibe. Um, so it kind of just comes with the territory. At the end of the day, um, you hope that each game they come in with the right mindset like they do as professional referees and we do as professional basketball players to give your best effort and just leave it out there on the floor. Is there too much complaining in the league, especially in the playoffs with you know, higher intensity games? From the players? Yeah. It's uh, a scale of 1 to 10. It's probably a good 8. <laughs> <laughs> Nine, something like that. But again, like that's because it, it, it matters. Like, if nobody was out there complaining, then I'm sure fans would just be like, yo, what's going on? Like, do these guys even care about what's, what's happening or whatever? There's a fine line between, like, competitive fire and feeling like, you know, everything should go your way and you have a reaction to a call, and, but then you'll be able to move on to the next possession. Um, to me, it's honestly exhausting, like, talking to the rest of every possession. So I try to stay in my lane and understand that I do foul sometimes and sometimes I, there are bad calls. It's just part of the game. Uh, keep moving. So would you guys study each? You, you stop the tape after each hard no, no. three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you said you guys I'm went sure, back and looked at no, them. So. I'm sure, I, I should say I personally did. You did. See, uh, we as a team did not, that okay. did not dominate our film session. No, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, that's Bigger that's things to worry about for sure. Um, 
You personally I definitely did just so I can understand what the difference is between the foul and non foul because I thought I got fouled in the first half on, okay. on a jumper where it was actually James, he came with me. So it's just one of those things where I want to see what the what the reads were game one and so we can be prepared for games. So you did that on your own before yeah. the group? Yeah. Okay. Steph, Thanks. following up on that, how much different is it preparing to face him where he jumps, where he stops compared to anybody else in the league? I mean, he just he has, a, he has a knack for getting you into a position where he, you know sometimes he can you know, contort his body or find a way to create contact and things like that. And sometimes they're foul, sometimes they're not. For us, we understand we played him what four series in five years, so seen it all. Um, there's another element now in concerning the conversation, but it, it's, that's unfortunate in terms of. The level of play and the competition out there on the floor that just dominating the narrative, which it should be. Steph, Steph, yeah, cool. Steph, at the end of the game, you uh, <coughs> you had the matchup with Nene. You had the big dude on you. You really didn't seem to take advantage of that throughout the game. What made you What made you take him on the last shot? It was the right read. Uh, we talked about it earlier. Our, our, in the first half, we were just rushing a little bit, and the spacing wasn't great. And, that's kind of like the game one feel out situation because they played us different than the Clippers did. So you got to make those adjustments. But just shoot a shot, you feel like you can take and make. When teams are using analytics to study tendencies to get any little edge, it's sort of a natural extension of those analytics to apply them to referees as well. Do you think that direction the fast lines go? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Human element to this. It's always has been, always will be. Um, it's basketball, I guess. I don't know how that can cross that line. So it's, it's a very interesting conversation right now. Your dad teach you anything Last about one. how to do with refs? Huh? Your dad ever teach you anything about how to deal with refs? And how to respond to that stuff? Not really. He wasn't a big. From what I know, watching him play, he wasn't a big. Talker, complainer, or whatnot. Uh, I think he just mentioned try to know them by their first name, and they might uh, they might approach the conversation a little different. If you uh, have a little bit of you know sense of respect, for sure. Great, thank you. We'll have Steve out here in a couple minutes. Thanks, sir. Thank you.